is how I work. Um, it's all by hand using watercolor. And I have a big palette like this. And the first thing I do is spray it down with a bunch of water because I used a lot of paint to get these really rich blue hues in this book. And we'll see if I can paint something from this weird angle right here. Uh, it's been a little while since I did the art for this book, so I don't remember exactly which pigments I used. And we'll start with this guy. Sometimes I like to just get it wet. Oops, that brush was not very clean. I'll put a lot of water on it. And I don't really mind the drips very much. Um, if I'm working more horizontally, it's not such a problem. As long as it's not drying, we're in good shape. We're not gonna have any issues. So mix up some colors that I'm gonna use for some gray clouds. Because very early on when I was writing this book, I wanted to have the feeling of the Pacific Northwest when it's really gray and rainy and the sky feels kind of heavy. And it's ominous, but it's also kind of beautiful. Um, so that's what I was going for. And we'll put some, some clouds in the sky here. And you can just let it sort of spread and do its thing. I don't know. This might turn out totally terrible. I apologize. <laughs> If I paint over something I don't want to, then I can just kind of It's so quiet. You're all muted and there's just silence. Okay. There we go. Let that spread a little bit. Go. Well, there's the sky. And then I might do the water with some different colors. I used a lot of blues and greens for the water. Oops, that was not what I wanted to do. It's not a very exact science. I think that's good for us to see, Jessica, and we really appreciate you doing this. I'm glad, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'm not very precise, and even when I'm working on a book, sometimes I'll redo the same page multiple times for that very reason, because it didn't turn out quite right the first time around. And that's nice. It's nice to, I mean, it's, it's, it takes time, but it's also nice to feel like it's not so precious. Every painting has to be perfect. It, it's okay to redo them and it's okay to toss them out if they don't turn out the way they should. It's a great lesson for anyone in a creative field. <laughs> yeah, I, um, especially with watercolor, I feel like you have to make so many bad paintings. <laughs> Just get them out of your system. And, and don't worry about it too much because you'll go crazy trying to make it look perfect. This is a blue that I use a lot in the book. Indan throne, Indan Therene blue or something. It gets very, very dark, um, which is why it's so useful. This is really hard to do from this angle. Oh boy. Well, you, get the idea. <laughs> you get the idea. I won't worry about it too much. Um, yeah, just kind of goes like that. Adding different colors and we'll go around his tail here. Her tail, his her tail, its tail. 
When you do watercolor, do you have to leave certain spaces white and come back to them? Is that why you're leaving like the whale white? Yeah, you, if you want to leave something light colored, you either need to paint around it or um, mask it out, or you could, um, you could paint over it with an opaque paint like gouache. Those are kind of the, the main options. How often do you paint vertically like this? I know you're also at an awkward angle, but as opposed to, you know, flat on a, a table. I use this setup a lot if I'm painting outside in plein air, you might say. On the, with the bigger paintings, so the paintings for this book are a little bit bigger than this, and they're kind of awkward to put on, up on my easel. So I'll do them more horizontally. I have a table where I can change the angle. So it can be anywhere from completely flat to, to pretty angled. So I can choose what I want to do. Anyway, I won't be able to paint the whale because I have to let this dry. But you get, you get the idea. <laughs> 